Hello, students of dynamics. This is Dr. Dan Baker. Welcome to this tangent normal example. We're going to take a look at the acceleration of BB-8 droid as he was racing around a 400 meter radius track. And we're given an acceleration. Now, this acceleration is around that track. The function is 2 plus 0.2 t, that whole thing in meters per second squared, and t is time in seconds. And at 10 seconds, we want to find the following two items. We want to find BB-8's distance traveled in meters, and we want to find BB-8 its acceleration vector in both tangent and normal components. Of course, if you want to write this out, feel free to go ahead and give the video a quick pause, get it all written out, then keep rolling. So let's go ahead and give us a problem sketch. So the problem sketch could look something like this. We have a 400 meter radius track. It doesn't tell us where he starts on this track, so we can just pick a location. Uh, let's say that he's right here. Of course, this is uh, definitely not to scale. If this is 400 meters, he would look quite a bit smaller on that track. But we can say that this distance r is equal to 400 meters. And we're given an acceleration function. Now, probably one of the more important parts of this problem is to think about what this acceleration is actually telling us. Okay, so we're told that he has an acceleration around this circle equal to 2 plus 0.2 t meters per second squared. We also know that in tangent normal coordinates that there are two different components to the acceleration, right? There's a tangent and a normal. Do you think that this function here is the equation for tangent, normal, or both? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. Pause the video if you need to. Since this is the acceleration around the track in the direction of his motion, it turns out that this is his tangential acceleration alone. Okay, so he's gonna have both an AT. He will also have an AN going toward the center of that curvature. And because his tangential acceleration is positive, we also could draw in here, his velocity is going to be in this tangent direction, right? Tangent in the direction of motion, and then normal coming back toward the center of curvature, fundamentally toward the center of that circle. Okay, so that's just kind of getting our head around what's actually being asked by the problem. So let's go ahead and start working through some things. Let's start with um, taking a look at this tangential acceleration function, we know we need to find a distance traveled. Okay, so if we have an acceleration and we want a distance, are we going to take derivatives or integrals going from acceleration to a position function? We know we have to take derivatives going from position to velocity to acceleration, so therefore we're going to take integrals going from acceleration to velocity to position. Okay, so we can write this out, that a sub t is equal to, I'll be real explicit about this one, writing out all the different pieces, dv dt equal to 2 plus 0.2t. Okay, just showing that the tangential acceleration is the time rate of change of the magnitude of the velocity. So we can do a separation of variables, and in doing a separation of variables, I basically take this dt, gather it up with the a sub t, I'm going to leave my dv uh, on the left side, and on the right side will be a t d t. Now we can take the integral of both sides of this equation. Um, now, as you integrate, you have to think about limits, right? So the velocity is going to start at zero and end at v. And then the acceleration is going to start, we're gonna go in terms of just a, um, a general variable t for right now. And I'll talk about why we're gonna do that. So from zero to t. So as we perform that integral, we find that the left-hand side is simply gonna equal v, because the integral of dv is v, and we substitute in that v minus zero. I'm gonna put in the minus zero just to be explicit. And then on the right-hand side, we're gonna take the integral of this two plus 0.2t. That gives me two t plus 0 0.1 t squared. And of course, if we evaluate that all the way from 0 to t, fundamentally, we're just going to replace the t with the t, and we're going to get the exact same thing. Okay, so I technically could even just erase that, and that is going to be the answer to that first integral. So we need to take another integral, okay, and we know that v is equal to ds dt. And of course, that's equal to our equation right up here. We could rearrange this equation 
and put it in terms, or excuse me, to separate those variables. So we end up with ds is equal to v times dt, just bringing this dv over onto the v side. And then substituting in the values that we actually know for v, we can write that ds is equal to 2t plus 0 0.1 times t squared. I can integrate both sides of this function. Um, here from 0 to s, it turns out s is the thing we're solving for, the distance around the track. And on the right-hand side here, again, 0 to t. Okay, so performing this integral, we end up with um, s minus 0 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have 2t squared divided by 2 plus um, 0 0.1 t cubed over 3. So, of course, the 2 over 2 could cancel those out, and if you wanted to, you could divide the 0.1 by 3. But fundamentally, we end up with the equation that s is equal to t squared plus 0 0.1 t cubed over 3. All right, so that's all of the calculus we actually need to do for this problem. Now we can start plugging in some values. And so to plug in these values, we can say, I'll put these over here to the left. We can say at t is equal to 10 seconds. We can first use this equation here, call this equation one. So from equation one, plugging in uh, 10 for t, we find that s is equal to 133 meters. And then coming out of equation two, which is going to label right here, we can find the velocity at that point. And I'll talk in a second here why we need that velocity. We can find that the velocity at 10 seconds, that is going to equal 30 meters per second. And the reason we need that velocity is actually for the normal acceleration. Okay, so. Um, I'll get there in just one second, I'm just kind of going through these one by one. So this is going to be equation number three, our tangential acceleration, plugging in the 10 seconds to our original function ends up being equal to four, and that's in meters per second squared. And then our a sub n we know is equal to the function v squared over rho. And so here's where our velocity is going to come into play. And so we have this 30 squared divided by 400 meters. And so our a sub n is equal to 2.25 meters per second squared. Okay, so he has an acceleration of 4 in the direction... So there's an acceleration of four meters per second squared in the direction of the circle, going around the circle. So this would be like you hitting your gas pedal in your car, but an additional 2.25 meters per second in order to hold him into that circle. If this normal acceleration didn't exist, you'd actually shoot off at a tangent line. And I'm sure you've all felt this when you're moving in a car and you're going around a horizontal curve on a road, you feel some force sideways on your body. That force is creating this normal acceleration, which is keeping you in that curve. The tighter and tighter the curve, if you take a look here, the radius is in the bottom of this fraction, the more normal acceleration you need, and the faster and faster you're traveling. And it's the square of your velocity, the more normal acceleration you need. So this is why we have um, speed ratings on curves that are lower than the speed rating on uh, just a straight road. Okay, so to bring this into kind of more uh, of an answer format, we could say for part A, the distance traveled S is equal to 133 meters. And for part B, we can say that our acceleration vector, could write it two different ways. One of those would be using unit vectors. So call this uh, four in the T hat, plus 2, 2.25 in the n hat, and that's going to be in meters per second squared, 
or using hard brackets. We could just list this as 4, comma, 2.25. If you wanted to, you could add a little notation above just to make sure everybody knows which, uh, which term is which, and then meters per second squared. So that would be the answer to this example. The key thing on this problem, quite honestly, is to not forget your normal acceleration. I see over and over and over that when acceleration is discussed, students think, oh, it's just the time rate of change of the magnitude of the velocity, simply the tangential, and they completely forget about the normal. Really, the way I think about normal acceleration is that normal acceleration is going to exist until I prove that it can't. Okay, And the cases where it will be zero are actually only cases where your particle has a straight path. Okay, So let me just write that right here. Um, a n is only zero if the particle's path is straight. If there is any curvature, to a path of a particle, it will have a normal acceleration. Okay, so always assume that it exists until you can prove that it doesn't. Hopefully that was a worthwhile example for you all and that you're having a really wonderful day.